do you use biomarkers routinely in follow-up? It is kind of a repeating question, but for follow-up, and is it different for high-grade tumors and low-grade tumors? And also, what about variant histology? Uh, very good question. Uh, in this moment, in, in my public hospital, we don't have the possibility to use these biomarkers. Probably in the future it could be possible, but in this moment it's not possible. Uh, in my private practice, I have uh, a, a very good experience with EpiCheck and with Euromonitor. In this moment, I only use it in patients with uh, low-grade tumor uh, because uh, uh, I know there are some papers published, but you have to, you have or you should have your own experience in, in the management of these uh, urinary markers. My, my experience is very good. Uh, in some uh, uh, older patients, I, I, I recommend to do these urinary biomarkers, and uh, I, when this is negative, I recommend not to do a cystoscopy. So my answer is yes, I think we should use. And I think Mario has a very good point there that you have to get your own experience. That's, uh, you start working with a market, there are several uh, on the market currently that are performing quite well, but you have to learn your own experience with that. And in my center, it has become very popular, of course, since the COVID period. Patients were not, not allowed to come or were reluctant to come, and we have a home-based test, so we send that home. Uh, the test is done, it's sent back to the laboratory, we get the result, we have a telephone consultation, and it actually works very, very well. Patients are happy, we are happy. Uh, our our uh, hospital board is happy because we, we don't see a lot of patients. Uh, so for me currently, it's really something that I use in, in uh, real practice. Uh, for me, it's the AP check. But again, uh, more of those tests uh, really perform very well in excluding high grade. And I use it in all patients, not only in low grade, in all. Okay. Maybe just one point on that because it's very important. Once again, we go to the cost, to the guidelines. As soon as it's not mentioned in the guidelines, you have your own protocol. Uh, so surveillance of this patient and you uh, will validate the data or you use it in your clinical practice, uh, I would say, out of your own experience and you add the costs, at the charge of the patient. One of the key issues is the meaningful of a positive biomarker and the other point is whether or not it's going to be reimbursed uh, to be incorporated into the practice. For, to, for these two points, how can we reach these two goals? Well, I think the first thing is, of course, uh, important. That's got to be, it's got to come in the guidelines. I check my own results. So I do it now alternating. I do a cystoscopy, a test a cystoscopy. So I see in the negative tests whether there, the next time there is a large T3 tumor, which there isn't, fortunately. And I looked in my hospital at the cost effectiveness, and it is really cost effective. Because you would be surprised what a cystoscopy is costing if you add the nurse, if you add the time of the doctor, uh, the, the cystoscope, the room, cleaning everything. It's, it's a lot of money, which we don't realize, but it's a lot of money. So uh, the home-based test for my hospital is cost effective. I, I think probably uh, you, 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 you have to tell the truth to the patient. No? Uh, uh, you, you should uh, speak with them and you should tell uh, if you have a negative uh, result in, in, in this test uh, with a probability of uh, more than 90 percent, you don't have a bladder tumor. So this is very important. The, 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 most, the most important uh, topic with this urinary biomarkers is the negative predictive value. It's I agree eating. with you, where, where you are not afraid to miss a, a high-risk tumor in a patient who would be so-called suitable for active surveillance. Uh, you, could, uh, you could use that uh, to skip a number of uh, useless cystoscopies. Uh, one other question is the choice of the test. You mentioned the nucleics. There are several markers on the market, companies coming, protein-based, DNA, methylation, why is this choice? There is no head-to-head -head comparison, so how do you choose? Because obviously you, you choose the same, and you're not working in the same hospital, you two guys. I, I, I have chosen DNA with EpiCheck and Euromonitor because I have participated in a clinical trial with EpiCheck some years ago. So this is my, my main reason. So you had a learning curve with them, and you know yeah. how to use it. Yeah. Okay. And Fred, I think you work also I did for other companies. I did so this with all four tests, the ADX, the Cepheid test, the Nucleix test, and the Euromonitor. And we are currently, because that was the first one available in my hospital, also from a logistic point of view, we started with the nuclear expert. We're doing well, um, so I have no reason to change that, but uh, okay. there are more tests around. Again. Can I expand the discussion to uh, Alberto Bereda? Because I yeah. know that Juan Palou and Alberto in, uh, in Puigvert, they have a 
some of the experience with the test. Is, uh, do you share the feelings that uh, we have just discussed, Alberto? Or uh, Can we have the microphone in the front row? El micro del... Okay. Um, yeah, 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 we share the same feelings. Uh, I, I may add that uh, why EpiCheck? Uh, the reason why EpiCheck is because we believe, uh, or at least the literature believes, that the DNA methylations are the best uh, uh, biomarkers we have. And I would remind that EpiCheck is uh, 15 DNA methylations that they're looking at. All the rest of the tests, uh, even the methylation tests, uh, they are looking for two or three methylations. That's why the negative protective value, and more than that, the sensibility, sensitivity of this study, of this marker, is very high. Well, one additional advantage, I Sorry, think, I, that you I can think, use I, the, uh, the nucleic test we have also. To, to go when forward yeah. uh, with the case because we just have uh, five minutes, okay. uh, right? It's very interesting. There, there is no head to head comparison, however, between tests, so we have to be very careful with the comparisons. All are the indirect comparisons. Please go on. Uh, in our case, we decided to use additionally to do cystoscopy urinary biomarker, one of the available on the market. So patient uh, was followed with cystoscopy three, six, 12 months, no evidence of disease, Cyto cytology, urinary biomarker negative. But after one year of uh, follow-up with cystoscopy, patient refused to undergo further cystoscopy pres procedures. He explained it why that it was quite painful, uncomfortable procedure. Question, which strategy do you choose in that? Would you try to convince patient to go to, in, to under, underwent cystoscopy, or you would consider using um, not invasive urinary biomarker alone or uh, with cytology, in combination with cytology? I, I think the best option uh, is it could be a urinary biomark biomarker uh, uh, together with uh, the cytology. That's exactly what we did. And so at 12 months, urinary biomarker, cytology, both were negative. But then at 24 months, urinary biomarker can, appeared can, to be... Sorry, there positive. is no slide. Yeah, okay. Now it is. Uh, urinary biomarker appeared to be positive, and we uh, went directly to cystoscopy. It was small papillary tumor, which appeared to be low risk. Um, taking into account age of the patient, we were, which was already 84 uh, years old, and uh, some number of comorbidities, we decided to uh, follow patients with active surveillance. So patient underwent cystoscopy. Um, it was the same lesion every time, low risk, uh, negative cytology, and this is final question, which would open um, final discussion. Which strategy now? and how often, uh, UBT alone, or in combination with cystoscopy, cytology, what would you prefer in that case? I, I think without any doubt, this patient has a, a positive cytology. So in my opinion, I, I will do a transuretral resection of the bladder together with a randomized biopsy of the rest of the bladder. This is my, my opinion. As far as I understood, cytology was negative. Maybe I misunderstood. Yeah. Uh, it was negative? negative? Uh, sorry, I think was positive. It was negative. Ah, no. So you can you can do it uh, uh, cystoscopy together with uh, cytology or urinary biomarkers. Sorry, yeah. I, I I thought it was positive. And sorry. if patient would be 60 years old, the same strategy? Yeah. Yeah, for me too. I mean, we would. I mean. Uh, I would uh, try to convince the patient to undergo a surgery, to do a transurethral resection in our setting with one centimeter tumor. Uh, it's just a very fast procedure, and no problem. If he does not want to undergo a transurethral resection, then I would go and follow up the patient with uh, uh, either uh, urinary biomarkers that we don't have because they are too expensive at, our, at, the, at the present time. You have to remember that EpiCheck is between 150 to 200 euros. There are others, other biomarkers that are cheaper, but uh, uh, you have to take a price, as Morgan uh, uh, said before, into account. So at the present time, clinical practice, one centimeter tumor and a recurrence with a previous TAG2, uh, we would do transurethral resection. Any comments from 
Professor Oupre? No, no, we can move on. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.